This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this week's edition of NRE Secrets, we're going to be discussing seizures in dogs and cats. Specifically what they are, how we can go about diagnosing the cause of the seizure, and then lastly, the most important five natural remedies. A seizure is defined as abnormal muscle activity as a result of uncontrolled messages from the brain. For most cases, we never actually know the underlying cause, and the diagnosis then is given as epilepsy. So how do you know if your dog or your cat is having a seizure? What I'm going to do here is we're going to demonstrate on Jesse what a seizure might look like if a dog was having a seizure, and you'd be better able to then diagnose that in your own dog or cat. So typically what's happened is you'll often, would often find your dog or cat lying on their side. Most often their head is extended out. You know how I've got Jesse's head extended out here. Then most often too, their legs are extended and you'll see them paddling like this, you know, with the legs extended out. So you can imagine what's happened is the brain is sending these messages uncontrolled. All those muscles are firmly contracting and they're reacting. And that's how you're seeing this, the paddling the legs extended, you'll often often see the back legs extended as well, as well too. Often our pets will have seizures at night and in those cases all that may happen is, is you may wake up in the morning and see a puddle of urine. So what's happened is they've had a loss of bladder control and they, they're uncontrollably urinated. So that may be the only indication there's been a seizure. And then in other animals there can be localized seizures. So you, what you might be seeing, as we see in Jesse's here, is you might just be seeing their mouth chattering. Like, sort of like this, where you just see their jaws clenching together and their, their teeth biting together. And, and that will be some type of a localized seizure. The last big point I want to make about seizures is if your dog is in having a seizure, your cat's having a seizure called status, where their neck's extended, their legs are extended, they're paddling, and they're not coming out of that seizure, so they're remaining in that seizure for more than five minutes, then you want to be getting them to your veterinarian as soon as possible. Or if you've got a dog that has epilepsy and you happen to have Valium on hand, then you're treating them with that Valium while you're also getting them to your veterinarian. So you don't, my point here is you don't want to wait any longer than five minutes if your dog is in status before you have a call place an emergency veterinarian and you're having your dog treated. Making the diagnoses. The age at which the seizure starts will give you a fairly good idea as to the underlying cause. For pets between the ages of 1 to 5, the most common diagnosis and seizure cause is epilepsy. Other possible causes include cancer, such as a brain tumor, infections, brain trauma, poisoning, low blood sugar, and hypothyroidism. Um, in the pancreas pictured here, you can have some types of tumors which can produce low blood sugar. Also, in our pets that are diabetic and they've been given an, an overdose of insulin, they'll have low blood sugar, which also show up as seizures. Your veterinarian may suggest specific diagnostic tests, such as blood work, x-rays, the more advanced ones, such as CT scans, MRIs, and spinal fluid taps. If your dog or your cat has epilepsy, then you really should be looking at some of the alternative remedies for treating seizures. Conventional veterinary drugs, those such as phenobarbital and potassium bromide, both have numerous side effects. First, let's talk about diet. There are no question there are links shown between diet and seizures. There are studies now in people showing that, that people on an Atkins type diets have actually shown decreased incidence of seizure activity. In animals, a couple different things we want to look at. One is looking at a hypoallergenic type diet. So specifically, we're feeding ingredients that they're likely to not be reacting to and ones they haven't been on before. What you want to look at is naturally preserved, grain-free diet, one that's primarily animal protein based. Essential fatty acids. They may potentially decrease brain inflammation. I'm pictured here as flax oil. The dose of the EFAs are 1,000 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. That would equate to one tablespoon of flax oil per 50 pounds daily. Homeopathics. There's a couple different ones I want to discuss. One is belladonna. 
it can be given twice daily in addition to the conventional medication. The belladonna dose being one 30C tablet for 30 pounds twice daily. Aconite is useful for sudden conditions, such as what's happening during a seizure. And it can be dosed at one 30C tab for 30 pounds every 15 minutes. The other point I want to make about homeopathics is they can be given just by putting them just under the lips of your pet. So it's something that can be given even during a seizure. Choline. Um, it's used for certain human nerve disorders. It helps make a nerve chemical called acetylcholine. And pictured here is just a, a nerve synapse. There's a specific medication called colidin. It can be given with conventional medication at a dose of one to two pills daily for a small dog and two to four pills given daily for a large dog. The last big remedy I want to discuss today is acupressure. It's very closely related to acupuncture, but it's something that we can be easily doing at home with our dogs or cats. And it's based on the Chinese medicine theory of energy flowing through different points in our, in our own body and in our pet's body, and that if we can modify that flow of energy when there's a disease, we can correct that energy imbalance and ultimately help our dog or our cat heal themselves. So when we're talking about acupuncture, there's one specific point I want you to see here. I've got a close up here of Jesse and it's called the GV26 point. And that lies right here, right at the base of Jesse's nostrils, just, just here in his upper lip. And what you're doing is you can see that point, you see where I've got my index finger. I think you guys can see it there. Let's use this finger here. And during a seizure, you can just put your finger there and hold that with moderate pressure for up to a minute. And what I've found in, with many clients is they've actually have seen that work and actually have their dog or their cat come out of, out of a seizure. So there it is, the GB26 point, right there, the upper lip below the nostrils, holding that for 30 or 60 seconds during a seizure. Thank you for watching this week's edition of Veterinary Secrets. What I want you to do right now is click the link, that link in the box below, and I'll be sending you my free book and videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural